there. My name is Peter. You're now watching The Real Grill. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad you could make it. Uh, this is the show with sizzling debates, heated discussions, and mouth-watering movie roast. So you're in for a treat today. Um, we're going to be looking into the latest movie from the Marvel Cinematic Universe by the name of Thor, Love and Thunder. Now, this is one that we've been anticipating for a while because we are fans of Thor, the last movie for Ragnarok. Ragnar rocked at the box office and it rocked our hearts as well so you know we were anxious to see what the what lied awaited awaiting for uh, the next Thor movie and you know joining Chris Hemsworth joining Taika Waititi who worked on the last one uh, and you know some other reoccurring characters from the previous movies including Jane Foster played by Natalie Portman she's actually returning as the mighty Thor so this is the female version of the Thor character and this has been pretty exciting with the promotional stuff and you know if you've been watching the trailer you've seen that there's little tidbits of what what potential could be in this movie so how is it going to play out also we've got Christian Bell as the villain Gordo God Butcher he's kidnapped somebody as guardian children and uh, you know this nefarious deed cannot go Unpunished. So we're going to join Thor's journey and see if he can rescue these kids. Also, um, the mighty Thor, as mighty as she is, unfortunately she has to come to cancer. So that is another thing that lies in in the way of whether or not we're going to see a, a good or a bad outcome. But the most important thing is the outcome of this movie. Did it um, live up to the expectations of the last movie? Uh, well, give, given the the success of the last movie, even or did it? You know, did it flounder? So we're gonna we're gonna join uh, the rest of the team. Hope you're comfortable and you've got your food ready. Let us now dive into the discussion with the real grill. Stay tuned. <laughs> About you guys, but um, I, I've been waiting to talk about this movie. Like, I've been counting out the days, honestly. Like, this movie, this has been probably the most anticipated film for me, not to watch, but to talk about. Yeah. Um, uh, and Lawrence, I know you've got a lot of things to say in it, so I can't. I got. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get into this, man. Um, but yeah, no, first of all, I'll, I'll just kick off the story. So, basically, we join, um, you know. Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy basically they're on a planet and they have well I mean obviously they're, they're sort of like these peacekeepers slash um, what, what would you call them what would you call them sort of um, what do you call heroes? The mercenaries. Mercenaries. That's it. Yeah, oh, exactly. Man. So they're, they're they're taking care of these these like pests on this on this planet this random planet um, and the Guardians of the Galaxy they they realize that you know Thor has become He's sort of like a, a glory hunter, I guess. I don't know, he's pretty much just making them look bad. And he's he's just pretty much like, let's be fair, he's just annoying. And they they, 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 wanna, they wanna ditch him, but they're trying to find a nice way, they're trying to find a nice way to do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, anyway, long story short, he, he basically is by himself this movie. Um, he realizes that he's accomplished everything he set out to do and he wants sort of a change of path. Uh, meanwhile, we have our antagonist on the movie, Gore, who has, uh, you know, lost, just lost his, his daughter um, on this sort of journey of salvation to, you know, to, to prove that he is uh, like a holy disciple uh, until he comes across the, the God that his people have been worshipping and realises that this God is actually pretty pretty much selfish and doesn't give a toss about his uh, you know his followers and so um, he, he in that this in that uh, moment the necro sword gives him the ability to basically kill this god no spoilers because this happens in, in the first 10 minutes anyway uh, and then he is there, therefore known as god the god butcher as his perspective of gods has basically changed he no longer looks up to them but looks down on them and he vows to remove all gods and, and thus sets about the uh, you know the, the events in the story so um i mean obviously that's just like a little sprinkle of the story that, that's not really getting into it i think we'll, we'll get into it as we talk about the scenes because we have quite a lot of yeah. but i mean first of all i just want to say like hey like 
I really, really like Ragnarok. Like that's one of my favorite MCU movies. And I felt mm -hmm. like that was a really redeeming movie for Thor as a character. And it really put Taika Waititi on the map as this you know, really great comedy writer, director <laughs> slash actor. But I don't know what happened in this movie, man. I feel, I feel like my, you know, we got too much Taika. Like we, yeah. we got Taika out. Like we got Taika fatigue, if that makes sense. And I feel like the story was just playing second fiddle to the jokes. Like there was just non-stop jokes. Like if if this movie was if the, if this movie was like a a beverage, and like the jokes were sugar, like I feel like I would be diabetic right now after, <laughs> after drinking this this beverage because it was just too overload. Like I just I don't know. But anyway, you you guys, I'm sure you have things to say. So I don't know. What, how yeah, I, I think I think this, the movie for me definitely felt like like the story story wise, it definitely felt like um, the whole thing was just like um, done on improv or it was just whoever wrote it basically just kind of wrote it without taking any breaks and kind of didn't look back at anything. It, that's the kind of feel yeah. it gave me. It was it was just like it was literally just felt like a wave, like I was just riding a wave, and that was it. There was it didn't feel like there was any detail actually went back into looking back at it maybe changing some bits up and just making it a consistent story and giving it some depth. Um, so yeah, it, it's a bit weird um, that it was yeah, just a straight up kind of comedy film and it didn't really have much depth, especially when, like you said, Rag Rag Ragnarok um, kind of had a good balance of both because it was a lot based on like Thor, like kind of discovering himself. Um, whereas this was just straight up like, just yeah, just humor and <laughs> fact <slapstick> comedy. <laughs> yeah, because from what I know, Taika kind of likes doing the improv stuff so he like encourages as much as you can but because of that it's turned that film into like a parody of what Ragnarok was that's what I heard a lot of people say is that it feels like it's just trying to copy Ragnarok is it's a parody of Ragnarok which which is a weird thing to say because it's the same people making it so so how can you drop the ball like that I don't know but they shouldn't have put as much improvisation and and um you know comedy as they did because it just focus it, it just took the focus off on the actual story as well as the impactness of what should have been good in the story which is gore the god butcher incredible storyline jane uh, the cancer and mjolnir storyline a fantastic storyline and <laughs> the improv and the jokes just just threw that all out of the way for me man which is just yeah it's too much it's too much yeah like i think definitely even with Jane, you know, the um, like bringing in like Jane's cancer, um, I thought that was going to be quite like a heartfelt, almost dark side um, to the movie. But then I did feel like, yeah, they didn't really touch on that. They almost just kind of just relayed into like, you know, they almost, they, I don't want to say say that they, they almost tried to not make it comedic, but they didn't dwell on it for what it was. Um, so yeah, it could be a missed opportunity. I actually thought maybe they might receive some criticism for that after after actually watching it, um, I'm not sure if they did. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. There they was did. some okay. criticism yeah. for that. Right, right, right. Makes definitely makes sense. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <it's> strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, for yeah. such for, for such a like a, a, you know a large topic that affects countless people around the world, um, they they really did sort of take it super lightly, and uh, I don't know. I I just felt. Oh, there we go again. Hold on. Are you guys hearing that? Or is it me? Yeah, I can hear it now. I can hear it. I can hear it. Um, I don't know what it is. I'll mute. I don't think it's coming from me. No. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So as I said for for something that um, and you know it's it's a bit it's a bit shorthand to, to to get instant emotion emotion because they could have easily made. Wait. Wait. Sorry. You guys. Yeah, I think uh, Lawrence, because when Lawrence turned off, yeah. I stopped hearing it. Turn, turn your one back on. Do you? I don't. Do you hear it? No, it usually goes away after the mute. Yeah, I think I think just 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 talk for it because we we can still all hear you. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Nah, so it was just a bit distracting. That's all. Um, yeah. yeah. What was I saying? Yeah. So it is quite a heavy topic, and um, yeah, there were quite a bit of complaints from viewers saying how like mm -hmm. this topic, which. Uh, affects a lot of people and actually could have been used to draw more emotion from the story <laughs> was actually super underutilized and it was there was there was just too many too much humor around it as well i don't know it just uh it was just kind of off-putting 
Oh man, that you know, I just can't. I can't focus with that. Yeah, it does get distracting. I'm not gonna lie, because I can't hear Pete as much as well as well. It's kind of. I don't know what's going on today. Okay. Um, I don't hear it now. Yeah. So anyway, I'll I'll, I'll keep it going. But um, yeah. So with the, with this movie, I feel like um, it had like a lot of potential to be great as well, because especially. As I said, with the you know actors from the last movie, the last Thor movie making a return, um, it just felt as though they wanted they, they wanted so hard to replicate that movie with uh, certain scenes, like the, the the scene where they were doing the theatrical bit. It just felt redundant. It felt a bit redundant. Like there was it was it was pretty much the same type of humor, same type of jokes. I know that obviously they added like, Melissa McCarthy as like the surprise character, but. Even that just felt like the same model, the same like copy and paste. Let's just get like a unexpected actor to, to replay this character that we know as a, as somebody else. Um, and yeah, sometimes you can have a running joke as a homage of something, but this one was just a straight out copy. So yeah, yeah. you're right, man. I <laughs> yeah, <agree>. exactly. <laughs> it just wasn't the same. Oh, oh like, yeah, and I think I think as well. Just I think you know while, while we're on the topic of opportunities. Sorry, dude. Like the antagonist, I think that was complete. Like Christian Bell's character, dude. Come on, like the guy is called like the God Butcher. Like I'm expecting this guy to be like a dark character you see on screen that makes you feel like, man, this dude is like badass, man. But you only rarely see him kill like what one god in the film. Um, and besides yep. that, you don't really see him harm. And do you actually see him harm anyone else in the movie? Uh, nope. No, I don't think so. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah like. <laughs> His, there was... his character not only did get he didn't get any like real character development to make you sympathize and empathize with the character other than you see him losing his daughter um but i really thought they were going to drive home kind of, almost like god of war like you know like kratos kind of thing where you see actually this should, guy has yeah. A, yeah this guy has a great deal to be angry at the gods and just a caveat i guess the way they could have done that is maybe by focusing a bit more on the necro sword and looking at maybe how it mm. manipulated him or maybe edged edged him on to take vengeance on the gods but Yes, you've lost your daughter. Yes, you've realized that, um, you know, the God which you pray to doesn't care about you. But to go from that to saying, well, I just want to destroy all gods now. Like, did he even know there were more gods? Than like, is he I, I, I think the them? assumption was, the assumption was it's the Necro Sword that corrupts. Yes. Yeah. Because it's the Necro yeah. Sword's purpose yeah. to kill yeah. all gods. And that's the corrupt. That's why he went from only hating his God to hating all gods. To I think that's all the of them. justification yeah. Yeah. for it. Um, yeah. But they don't, like, that, so it's, it, they don't yeah. show that. Yeah. So I think that's the movie's fault for not... not not delving into that more deeply. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. I well, think this movie was trash. I really do. I thought I don't think there's any sort of redeeming feature for it. I've, I, I don't know how you go from Ragnarok to this. Like it is, it's like he had no idea what made Ragnarok so great. It's like he maybe he just thought it was the funny parts that made Ragnarok so appreciated. So yeah. he thought let's dial that to let's dial that to eleven and waterboard these people with jokes. Um, <laughs> And I think this would still have been a bad movie had the jokes been funny. The fact that the jokes weren't funny, I think just kills this entire film because that's all they were going for. They didn't care about the plot. They didn't care about the character motivations. They didn't care about any emotional um, impacts or the stakes. They didn't care about Thor as a character. They didn't care about building the villain up as, a, as an antagonist. They didn't, want to sh they didn't bother showing him. Christian Bale, I think in the scenes that he was in i think he was acting his ass off but he was in the movie for like 10 15 minutes they didn't utilize him at all they didn't they didn't build up the antagonist to be a, any sort of a real threat he was kind of a joke and well, not a joke yeah. i would that's a bit too far but he was just kind of just there as a plot device because the movie needs a bad guy because we yeah, see him yeah. kill one god we see him fight for and then he steals a bunch of kids that's all yeah. he did in the movie like, <laughs> you put it that and way, everyone, yeah. and, and everyone seems to hold his own, their own against the God Butcher. Lady Four, who's been Four for like ten minutes, can fight and hold her own. Valkyrie can hold her own against her against God Butcher. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't seem like there were any sort of real, real stakes, and there it just seems like the most important thing in every scene was the joke. And everything took backseat to the joke. We just got to make sure the joke lands. We don't yeah. matter if it, if it affects the plot. We don't know if it makes sense. We're just always going to um, just make a joke of everything. And I think they've done a very a huge disservice to Thor's character. Because I think what they did in Ragnarok and where he went through from Ragnarok to end Infinity War and Endgame, I think they've turned him into a complete clown. Like, yes. there's a difference yes. between being comedic and being a clown. 
Like he was literally being a clown in very serious situations, and you just think that's not yeah. false character. He wouldn't and, act like that just for yeah. the sake of telling a joke. Yeah. And it's made me hate his character. Like I don't want to see any more Thor now. Like, that's how much I dislike his name. And and, yeah. and 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 you know what? At least at least putting him with the, a team with the Avengers. Sometimes you can have that kind of one comedic character, which obviously, if he's the one which is making punchlines every other scene, it's fine because he balances out the rest of the cast. But he's the main character in this. Like the movie's called Thor. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't have him being the punchline the scene. Like he needs to be carrying the film. And yeah, definitely how his character was written just just doesn't do that at all. Um, he kind of reaches this this kind of you know he achieves like almost enlightenment um, throughout Ragnarok, um, leading on to Endgame, and then they just take it all away. Um, in in this movie, um, Fall Up and Thunder, and you know the whole thing behind it is I'm not sure if they were getting at it was because like you know he kind of lost his sense of self when you know didn't love anyone or whatever or you know his romantic life didn't didn't end well. It, it, yeah, just I, I think I agree. Definitely a disservice to the character, and I'm not I'm not sure how they're going to redeem him. But even even if they do redeem him, it's just going to seem inconsistent with what this what like, this movie done to him. You're almost going to have to just like just not include. This movie, ignore this movie. When, yeah, just yeah, ignore when, it, yeah. If you watch it, if 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 you watch it, because it's just gonna seem like, wow, that was a weird uh, emo phase he went through there or something like <laughs> for this film. Because yeah. like. yeah, <laughs> Thor is a very tragic character. Like the character that they portrayed throughout Ragnarok, throughout Infinity War, and yeah. the Endgame, he's a very tragic character. And I think those movies done a very good job of showing his arc of everyone he's lost. He lost his dad, his mum, his brother, his best friend. It's home, like, he, and you see it in Infinity Wars what that did to him. So to see all of that, and then Endgame where um, where he failed to stop Thanos, like in Infinity War, and mm -hmm. what that did to him, and all of that, and then just to turn him into a clown, it just, yeah, I think it's a very, I think it's quite disrespectful to that character. It's, it's it is real a real shame. Yeah, that's the absolute thing because like mm. the thing about Ragnarok and then Infinity War and Endgame, that was his like journey to like rediscovering himself and stuff why would you rediscover yourself into like an idiot like you don't there, there should be like real growth like he, he should be like you know so, like so someone who actually knows himself and like because he was still like struggling at the beginning of this film as well which is weird yeah he was like yeah, up yeah. in the mountain like meditating or something I, I was just, and and the whole thing was that he missed jane which is like a weird that's what they kind of boiled his character yeah. down into like he has so much more depth in the comics anyway he has so much more depth there was yeah it's just as absolute disservice as you said man yeah can <laughs> we talk about the stupid lady thor plot in terms of how she yeah. became thor yeah can we please well, this make is, sense this of that is <laughs> because this is so dumb that I, I i couldn't believe what i was watching yeah the fact that they didn't show it I think they knew oh, that yeah. this didn't make any sense because she became four <laughs> off screen because they knew this don't make sense because everything like all of a sudden Milner can repair itself. If it could do that, four went back in time to take his hammer from from time to get his hammer. He could have just fixed it. Like, and, yeah. yeah, and I think, I think you know it's quite obviously it's it's like definitely the lady four plot is weird because. You know, you, you you discover like towards the end of the film that what Thor can kind of um, fire like the children and delegate his power to whoever he wants to, which he's never done before, and I'm not even sure he knew how to do. And we've never seen anyone do that besides, I think, his dad, his father, and um, obviously he didn't learn that from his father. So it's quite weird to see that he now has this ability. Um, yeah. But then also as well, like when when they recreated that scene where he kind of whispers to to, to Mjolnir, oh, like make sure you check Jane. Um, he wasn't delegating his power there. That wasn't that wasn't an instruction. That wasn't or anything. That was just all. Oh, that was that was just kind of in the moment. So even if like I don't know if they made the hammer somehow, I don't know just to say for argument's sake, like protect her physically. I'm not sure how they went. From That's that the thing they did in this movie. They stole, stole the power onto her. That was weird. They made his weapon sentient. Like he's talking to them and like they're having emotions and fighting them. Like it made no sense. Even yeah, that was quite like weird, like the whole out of jealousy and stuff. That yeah. Was... yeah, the new, the kind of new, the new girlfriend and the ex, and the ex girlfriend yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. That was, was so... I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was funny. Like, it was like funny, the, yeah, yeah. you first. know, you know what? The, the idea of it was funny, and it was yeah. just like, obviously the way the way they made the the, the, the first joke. The, the first, yeah. yeah, the first joke was funny. Yeah, when he kept doing it, 
Yeah. I was like, okay, you need to stop yeah. now. Okay, the first joke was funny where they just hovered into the room when he was trying yeah. to pull Mjolnir Mil- Mil- and the Stormbreaker just... All right, I was like, fair enough. That one was funny. But he <laughs> made it a plot point. Like, they needed to go on a boat because this this axe refused to take him anywhere anymore because he was it was upset. I was like, really? Really? That's what we're doing now? And yeah. it's a plot point. <laughs> If they were gonna bring this in, they should have brought this in in another movie. So it's constant. This is just, it's just thrown in there randomly. It made no sense. Mm. All of a sudden, his weapons have feelings. Like, I'm yeah. gonna... <laughs> although while we're while we're on the top, I did actually think it was quite cool how Jane Thorpe utilized your uh, there, al- allowing her to kind of shatter the pieces. Yeah, just shot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was quite cool. No, no, that was cool. I was I was. It did look cool. Yeah. yeah, it did look cool. Oh, that was very yeah. um, cool. Are we gonna like like talk about how she was so good at fighting? I mean, I mean it's, it feels oh, like anyone who gets his power could just fight because the kids went off to a battle. It was magic. <laughs> it was magic. Yeah, That's it. Magic because I can understand handling the power, but it was the fact that she she was fighting as she's been doing this her entire life. So what is a scientist? So what is a scientist? Like, yeah, it's just like. I you say, when I, they don't know how to fight. They're not going to be like, yeah, let's go and yeah. start beating up. <laughs> That's the end of that one. And this is the thing. When I when, when I saw the trailer, I was actually thinking maybe it's a Jane from a different universe or something. Yeah. She seemed like someone who'd been doing this for years, but really she'd been doing it for like, what, a few days? Or like a week? Not even that long. Like, And she was better. She almost seemed as good as him. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, I, I think, think the problem is she went like... toe-to-toe with Gore, so... Yeah, the problem is, is because in the in the comics, when she transformed to Lady Thor, she, it wasn't like it was Jane Foster, but it was almost like like an alter ego where her personality kind of changed as well. So that yeah. would kind of make sense that 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 the power changed her in a way where she would no, not. But, but it didn't. But it they, they started having banter. Like she was like, I need a catchphrase and all sorts. No, no, no that's what I'm saying. saying I'm saying the comics. Yeah. Oh, it should have yeah. been the same in this movie where they should have made it like if they wanted to explain the fighting ability, then they should have made her personality change a bit and yeah, and explain that the hammer helped her that way. So and think, it wouldn't have been hard to do. It wouldn't have been hard to do because they obviously because of her of of. of uh, and whatnot, you there's a clear distinction. Obviously, they it's like it's a, a transformation when yeah. she picks up the hammer, it's almost like her skin starts glowing. Like, do you know what I mean? So, it wouldn't have been hard to just at least infer at least that maybe using the hammer affects her psychologically as well, as yeah. opposed to just helping her, you know, mitigating her physical illness. Um, so yeah, so yeah, another missed opportunity which they kind of could have explained, which just tracks from her character. Yeah. I'm mm. still upset with that kid battle scene because the teddy bear was fire lasering out of his eyes, it just. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, the, it's, the whole, it's the whole tone of the movie the whole tone of the movie is like a joke it's, it's, it's like just, never, nothing I literally, ever taken seriously so. I sat through that scene going like what the fuck <laughs> the actual fuck what's unfortunate is I think they from what I've heard they cut out all the actual you know good bits like I heard they cut yeah. out all the, the god killing bits for instance yeah, they oh, cut it out. but, but they did actually have that all these other gods yeah. were supposed to be in it but it's cut out all that for some reason that's the only thing there's about two hours. There was about two hours at the time. Two hours. Out, God yeah, damn. Should we, should we start um, yeah, there was a, a, apparently there was a gory scene where you know where he's got those marks on his head. They actually showed him actually cutting himself, oh, like, wow. cutting his head to, to show oh, wow. his devotion to the cause and all that. And like there was a lot of gore scenes apparently that were cut yeah. out of this movie. Maybe because they were literally trying to tone it down to kids. So uh, maybe it was too gory yeah. to show. Because that's what Christian Bell said. Maybe it's like, some of the maybe, scenes were too dark. Yeah. This might be the first time where we won the opposite of a director's cut. <laughs> we want something different, please. Yeah. With all that new footage. Yeah. That sounds awesome, damn. Yeah, it could have been the most. A real uh, shame. But, yeah. Should we talk about this? Um, I can't remember what it's called, but that the place where the gods hang out. I'm going to call it Olympus. Olympus. Like it was I mean, just call it Olympus. Yeah, let's just call it Olympus. Yeah, we'll call it Olympus. Yeah. Olympus. It wasn't now, but yeah, we'll call it Olympus because Zeus was the head of it, apparently. And um, that plot point, because that was. That was special. I mean, that was. I don't. I don't. I didn't understand why. Why that? I mean, it, it was just so dumb. Like, so left. So left. Finish. Left. Left. Obviously, just, left. Obviously, just, just just forget and not even talk about the fact that these gods done like nothing um, when Thanos. You know. You know, Thanos clicked away half the universe, which arguably meant that half of those gods potentially got kicked away as well or i'm not sure if they're immune or anything but we can call that for now but yeah so they they he he went for went there to enlist the help of obviously these gods to take on gore and gore is such a 
dangerous character, although we don't really see it on screen, that like he needs an army to take him on because he's all these bug creatures. But then he goes and ends up, what, killing, um, flipping Zeus? <laughs> like, why are you there? It's like, no, not killing, so injuring Zeus. Well, well, yeah, well, well, yeah. well obviously, obviously when, when, when he throws it through, you assume Zeus is dead. Yeah. Like, you know, you later on find that he's alive. But that was, yeah, not, what, like, why? Like, that just Russian like, Zeus, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, a... no sense, dude. Like, very one yeah. kind of events there. Which and he's meant to be, and Zeus was meant to be like the strongest god the there guy. is. Like he's the guy. Old, he's yeah. old and level. And the fact that Thor just one shot him, like with his own weapon, with his own weapon, just with his, his own weapon, weapon it's, just, it's just like, why did you need these people's help? <laughs> Clearly, you're not stronger than them. Like <laughs> this, you just caught him thunderbolt. That was like his best move. You just <laughs> caught him, threw it back at him, <laughs> and he. It's like, why did you need their help? Clearly, <laughs> clearly, you're the guy. <laughs> Apparently, it, it was it was weird that they didn't utilize more of the gods, and we didn't see more of the gods in action because that would have been interesting. We'll see if they showed more of the gore scenes, and we could have seen more of the gods fighting against gore, and that would have actually given us some perspective yeah. as to how powerful gore is, and also seeing some more gods. Because apart from Zeus, we didn't really get introduced to any other god apart from the god at the beginning. We don't know who he is. He was a nameless we got god. The bow bun, though. The bow bun. The bow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, again, it was it was even quite weird that Zeus and the other gods didn't want to get involved. Do you think that kind of, you know, doing it to preserve their own existence would have been... I mean, they, they, them to get involved? they said it. They said it. They were scared. They said they didn't know how to get there. What kind of... I get what you're saying, but even even if they were scared, they were aware of Gore and they were aware of the fact um, that um, Thor held the key um to obviously so wouldn't it have made sense for them to get in contact with Thor first and like kidnap him or something rather than just letting it play out like leading to potentially leading to their own extension that made no I mean, you say that but uh, acting like this whole movie is not a big plot point anyway <laughs> and also like, like i don't buy that gods even if they may be scared i believe that these are immortal beings that live thousands of years i don't i believe they'd be too arrogant to yeah. show that sort of fear yeah i don't believe that they would just cower I believe that they would do anything in their power to just kill this man. Like, they would just, like, sort of, like, I don't believe the reason that Zeus is hiding it from all the gods is because they know he doesn't want to cause a panic. I don't believe they would panic. I believe they would no. just say, let's just deal with it. He's one guy. We're gods. There's a thousand of us. Like, Mike, let's just, Mike, let's just deal with it. Mike, <laughs> Mike. a mythical sword that's known for killing gods. <laughs> like, it can literally, if you pierce a god with a necro sword, yeah. you're dead. So I can, I can kind of understand it. But at the same time, you're right. Yeah. It's a large quantity, you're right. I don't they know. were, they were, the movie, the killed the guy with the necro sword. So it's not like it was, like they showed that it's not an impossible task because one yeah. god killed the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, well also, all, all, also as well, obviously, like, like you said, the, the, the god at the beginning, um, like the, the, the god that Gore was praying to and his people praying to, that god was very arrogant. He was arrogant enough to have killed the previous owner of the necro sword and not immediately try to hide it or destroy it. He left it laying on the ground for any Tom, Dick and Hyde to come and pick it up. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, how did yeah. <laughs> Boy, I mean, uh, I, I get that a lot of things don't add up with this movie. And I think it's clearly, obviously they know what they were trying to do. They, they wanted to make something lighthearted for the kids. Mm -hmm. Something that wasn't going to take itself too seriously. And that's an understatement to be fair. Um, I actually don't hate the movie. Like, uh, yeah, I I, I uh, walked out thinking, what WTF did I watch? You know, uh, it, this this isn't what I was expecting. But at the same time, like, I can't I can't say I didn't like laugh at some of the jokes. Like, um, you know, yeah. the, one, the one you were bringing up earlier, Law, with the whole um, comparing his, Milner to his ex girlfriend and how like uh, Stormbreaker is like sort of always creeping. Like, I generally found that funny. I thought it was like a quite smart joke, even though, yeah, it did get that was weird. around. Um, but I, you know, I don't know, you guys probably noticed that Chris Hemsworth is probably like the biggest he's ever been in, in any of the Thor movies. Like, he's yeah. put on mm. loads of muscle. And I think for me personally, I think that's because he's pretty much the one carrying the movie. Uh, because <laughs> he's the only character that I actually found like gave. Like, say what you will about the character of Thor, but the actor, I thought he gave an actual pretty good performance. And I think Chris Hemsworth has mm. great uh, comedic timing. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, delivery. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I, every, like, not every, but I'd say 99% of the, the scenes that I found funny were Chris Hemsworth's scenes. Um, 
So, uh, you know, if you're coming in, like, sometimes you got to come into a movie and think, okay, look, if I wasn't carrying the baggage of the MCU, which I think is kind of becoming a heavy burden to bear at this point because the franchise has been going for so long, it's now every movie has to be up there, do you know what I'm saying? Because Endgame set the bar so high, every movie has to be, like, up to this standard. And I think with this movie, they just wanted to make a breezy, kind of light-hearted, just wishy-washy movie for anybody to enjoy but problem is if they want to do that don't pick the god butcher or the cancer storyline well, this, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing this yeah. is the same thing same with the god of the galaxy like see yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Let, let that be funny and lighthearted. <laughs> yeah but yeah unfortunately yeah they, they picked the wrong character they picked the wrong storyline and i think altogether i well i don't know if you guys feel this way i mean some people say that you know tackle with te he was like too full on with, with the jokes and whatnot but i actually think that maybe the studio is to blame more so maybe they because I, I heard that like kevin feige he was um very much preoccupied during the making of this movie and obviously he's been the main producer guy that's overseen this whole uh you know mcu success story but with this movie because there's so many branches of the mcu now we've got the shows we've got yeah. like all these movies coming up he hasn't had the reins of this movie so i feel like you know, Disney just wanted to re replicate Ragnarok. They were just like, you know what, put as many jokes as you can in there. You know, we want to make this appeal to kids, the next, the new generation. And you know, for that reason, I feel like this is why the movie suffered ma mainly. Um, but yeah, again, there were. It wasn't just Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth. I did really like Russell Crowe's performance. I thought he was really funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was well, his actor. accent, yeah. It was very <laughs> fun. Yeah, the, the accent. I, I was trying to work out what accent went out. He sounded Russian. Was that? <laughs> Was it Russian? Yes, was it Greek? Was it Italian? Was it what was it? Yeah, yeah, was it, was it was meant to be Greek. Yeah, oh, was it? okay, fair enough. That's that's the weirdest Greek I've ever heard. But yeah, I thought he no, he even... added a, a little bit of flavour to the movie. You know when you're like you're kind of like you're you're sunken and then like something just comes up out of the blue to yeah. kind of lift your spirits. And I felt like he really did that for the movie. So I, I did enjoy yeah. that scene. But yeah, I mean, I, I sorry, and just one one quick one. Um, Christian Bell, I thought he gave an incredible performance. Um, absolutely, I really yeah, absolutely. See that. Yeah. I really want to see that cut, but his character was just so weak, both uh, literally and physically. Like, I know he's supposed to have the Necro Sword, but at no point did I ever fear for those kids. Like, I was like, no, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not um, hurting anyone. And every single battle, you've already made this point, though. Sorry, but I'm catching up. <laughs> but um, yeah, like they just dumped everybody. It's like, <laughs> it's like when you playing one of those video games where you've completed the game and you're playing the game from the beginning again and all of, you know, you, you've still got your stats and your weapons from the first playthrough and you like, it's just like one hit kills for every single minion. I just felt like nobody's in danger. New game plus. New game plus, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, it was just, it was, it was, it really just yeah. had a lack I... of any thrill or excitement. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think I would have with all the comedy and like even Thor's character being comedic. Um but yeah, I think it would have been it would have been okay if they just let um Christian Bell's character um be the counterpart to that. I thought that would have given the movie balance, but instead it was just completely one sided. Again, I think Laws has mentioned that um Gore is hardly on screen, he's in the movie for like maybe ten minutes. Um so yeah, just completely unbalanced. Um yeah. Oh, and, and, and again, I guess um, I think one that someone mentioned about was the, uh, I think it was Susubi, you were, you were saying how like um, maybe with the director and they just completely misinterpreted what made um, Ragnarok that's look good, but you know, yeah, one, said that, yeah, yeah. Two, of, two of the strong points for Ragnarok for me was actually the music and the visuals, like that was one of the, like, I enjoyed seeing the um, the retro colourful visuals on the screen of Ragnarok, the, the, the artistic work and the music, the kind of retro synth music they had. Um, and yeah, they just didn't really have that in this film, which I thought was quite weird. It was almost like they had taken oh, back really? what, taken I out the color, thought... and it was like I was watching in black and white. <laughs> Visually and soundtrack wise, I actually thought it was um, about the same for me, because because I mean I, I love age rock and all that kind of stuff, so I think they did a really good job with that. And visually, I mean, the one thing I did enjoy about the film was the visuals and like the direction of the action and stuff. So that was really well done, but it was just done for a really bland story <laughs> that, I actually, that, yeah i, I feel like maybe the, maybe maybe the story made all the plans yeah, yeah exactly. like watching it <laughs> yeah i think the main problem was the actual the, the enemies themselves they were just shadow blobs 
So whatever you put in shadow blobs, it just it just it just looks like a mess. You don't know what they because they can shit, they can move. Yeah. And movies always have this problem. Whenever the enemy is like a, just a shadow blob or a, a big shadow, or, because I don't know what those minions were. Does, does anyone actually know? They just look like. Black. <laughs> did they did they come from the Necro Sword? Yeah. 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 They did. Okay. Cool. Do any of you know the, the origins? shadows? Yeah. Do you know the origins of the Necro Sword? Because apparently it's supposed no. to be li- li- linked to Venom in the comics anyway. Uh, it's meant to be linked to the symbiote. Yeah, I thought it was linked to like the, the main symbiote. I thought it was like yeah. the, the, the strongest the symbiote. Is it Null or not the original the symbiote god or whatever? Yeah. Right, but, yeah. Because mm, obviously, wouldn- obviously Venom came from space um, and this is meant yeah. to be the origin of like that, that entity that yeah. created oh, yeah. Venom, I guess. But um, no, you completely. I completely agree. I didn't think about that. But yeah, the, the whole blobs and just yeah, the villains just didn't look interesting at all. Um, you obviously the extensions of gore and the and the necro sword. But yeah, sorry. Going back to what you were saying, uh, Subi, with the visuals and the music, you you said you thought that was going well. I thought this movie, this movie, looked so creatively bland. Like I liked yeah. the theme of like the whole eighties, you know, the typography and whatnot. But I just didn't feel they really. They really utilise it. Like, you know what I would like to see? Um, how, do you remember that movie, Kung Fury? Where they, oh, they, yeah, yeah. they show yeah. uh, the footage looks like distorted. Like they used those VHS uh, in, in, yeah. imperfections. I would have liked to have seen that with this movie as well. I thought I would have had a, uh, had a nice touch. I would have liked some synth wave. Just to kind of yes. take this movie away from what the other movies look like. Just... I mean, Ragnarok was all about that, wasn't it, with the synthwave and stuff. That's why they changed it to. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, it was a mix of rock and synthwave. Ragnarok. Yeah. And, and speaking of Ra- Ragnarok had a lot of. Had a, I remember. I definitely remember the. That's what kind of um, old feel for me. Yeah. Which I quite like. I guess so. No, I guess I guess so. But I would have liked a, a bit more variety because they kept playing the same yeah, songs. Yeah. They kept playing yeah. the same songs over again, and it just kind of got it, it got annoying. But um, yeah, I think this movie. <laughs> This this movie was kind of just um, low hanging fruit. I think that that's kind of the sums up the whole movie. Low hanging fruit. It just it's didn't fun. really try hard enough to yeah to, to be memorable. yeah. And and I know you were saying uh, Pete about the um, movies in the MCU carrying the baggage of previous movies and the expectations going higher. Um, and I do see your point. Unfortunately, that is just natural when someone sets a standard in anything you expect them to re- ex- maintain said standard that's what you compare you always compare mm. people to their lot their previous work and obviously his previous work in the mcu was ragnarok which was a 10 out of 10. now i didn't expect him to beat 10 out, uh, at ragnarok i thought that would be a, a really tough task mm-hmm. but I wasn't expecting it to go the opposite way. Either. I wasn't yeah, expecting it yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah. like there was there's there's a happy medium where like if I compare it like similar to like the the Dark Knight for example, I thought that was the best movie in the trilogy, and I wasn't expecting the Dark Knight like, Rises to be better. And I don't think it was, but it was in the same ballpark. It wasn't yeah, like, yeah. like it was a ten out of ten. The Dark Knight Rises wasn't a two. Like it, it was like an eight or a nine. So like you know what I mean? We're not expecting that that level of a drop off. <laughs> And considering it was the second guy who made it, I think your point about Kevin Feige is actually quite profound. Maybe that was the yeah. balance that was required. Maybe Kevin Feige is what provided that balance yeah. in Ragnarok yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. there in because, this movie potentially, and yeah. it just let Taika run wild. And um, the thing is, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Hart, he's always an advocate of Feige. making sure the, the, the movie reflects the comic, like it's comic accurate. And this clearly, mm. this movie clearly wasn't like it didn't respect the origin of Gore. It wasted his his whole character arc. <coughs> so I, it's very felt. It's very felt. I don't know. For me personally, I I, I just feel like this movie just doesn't really. It, it, it's it's not for the fans. It's not. It, it's it, it it does what it wants to be. It's just there to make. It's a cash grab. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's just a bit fun. Complete, it's, it's just a bit fun. And I I definitely don't. Uh, I I can't imagine how this movie is going to tie in to the direction that MCU is taking because obviously you had um what's it called I forgot it's escaping out uh wizard man I can't remember his name now um, Doctor Strange you know, yeah Doctor Strange he that 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 you, you get the feel that obviously the action his movie is taking are leading into the next phase of the MCU maybe but I didn't get that feel before it just kind of really seemed like a side a side story yeah I think it was happening in the main MCU 
Um, so yeah, I'm not. So I'm not even. Again, I'm not even. Sure what they would do with a sequel? Like now, now the characters are on the run from the rest of the Olympian gods or the rest of the gods in in existence. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what direction they could take with it. But but can we can we briefly talk about the ending with um Thor adopting um Gore's daughter? <laughs> before before we get to that part, before we get, that, I was gonna ask. Yeah. What was people's opinions on the ending scene where both Gore and uh, Lady Ford died? Because that's meant to be the most emotional scene in the entire movie. Because obviously, we've, that Gore is redeemed to an extent and he finally gets to see his daughter. And also, um, Jane Foster dies in I felt Thor's like hand. Did anyone feel anything? Because that was no. meant well, to be is, the most emotional part in that movie. I think that could be emotional if everything that followed before that was good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> like they didn't, 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 didn't earn, didn't it's earn the emotion. It's supposed to be leading up to that point, isn't it? Oh, the whole movie is supposed to lead up to that point. And what, what, a, yeah. what a good film is meant to do is when you have a tragic loss at the end, it's meant to really connect you with the characters so that when, you, when there is a loss at the end, you do feel like you've got that emotional connection yeah. with the characters and you do feel that sense of loss but this movie just didn't do that and i think it's again we touched on it there wasn't enough depth to Paul's character they didn't really touch on jane's character with with with, with, uh, with her illness um to make you really feel that at the end of the movie this is a massive loss for the the cast and for the for the franchise i just yeah i didn't really care i didn't shed a tear and yeah. on, on to the next scene really like <laughs> to be honest well this is the thing like both both um gore's daughter you only see her in one scene prior to that moment, <clears throat> and that is when she's dying or when she's dead. Uh, so you you never have any kind of attachment to her. So to see her uh, automatically run, uh, so all of a sudden running around with Thor, you're like, what? Where did this come from? Like <laughs> there was no there was no build up towards this. It's just you know what I mean, you have no attachment to this girl whatsoever. She might as that might as well have been the first and only scene that you see her in. Um, and as for Jane, like. I'm sorry, but I mean Natalie Portman. She's she's a good actress, I believe. But I think she was miscast as I, obviously I know she was already cast as um, Jane, but I just feel like she just couldn't put, pull off that comedic acting, she did that, that comedic performance. Um, and her, again, we've said it already, but her storyline just was weak in general in terms of, like the whole cancer um, arc. It it just didn't really it didn't really it, re, it didn't really land because the the movie didn't take it seriously. So why should we take it seriously? Yeah. Um, so when she actually did pass away at the end, you're just thinking, okay, well, all right. I guess it was leading leading to that point, uh, but we yeah. never we never really felt sympathy for, sympathy for her character. Anyway, I speak for myself. No, um, I, I I totally agree, and, and it's interesting you say that. Good point you raised. She didn't pull off um, like like a comedic um, character for the movie because even like the lines where she kept going on about I need a catchphrase. Yeah. and stuff for me those scenes just felt awkward like it felt like she was trying like the character was trying to be funny but it was like this this is it's not funny like i don't yeah. you know what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was i wasn't actually sure what she was meant to be like I, I don't know what she was meant to be for the movie is she supposed to be like a strong female lead character is she supposed to be like another funny character i don't know what she was meant to be are we meant to put sympathy and empathy were? I, I don't know i don't know what she was meant to be for the film I think what um, would have been a great introduction slash setup for her would have been if they showed her actually earning Milnir. So she actually yeah. does, she doesn't just show up at the you know the, the the site or location where it is, and then you know next scene you see she's Lady Thor or Mighty Thor. I, I feel like if she actually I don't know did some sort of self sacrifice, um, she you know proved that only she could figure out how to. Uh, put Thor back, uh, Mjolnir back together. That would have, you know, established that yeah, she is worthy. But I don't know. It just it's, it's almost it's almost like that. She was just given to you know, like when when someone's um, the chosen one. She's like she's just chosen yeah. for no reason. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah, like yeah. one of the worst plot devices because it's they don't earn that power. And, and, and as a result, you don't care about that. You don't, you don't believe that they deserve it. I mean, that's that's why people don't like Captain Marvel because of that same issue. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Well, like that yeah. this film was like really short, so they could have definitely added like an extra 20, 30 minutes to kind of show her getting used to the power and like, like you said, earning the power and and and, and also dealing with the cancer while doing that. So that would have established some kind of emotional um, uh, connection that Ruben was talking about. That at the end we could have felt some more. 
but they just didn't do it. They just cut this. This cut out all the good stuff, I guess. It's, yeah. Because so really, yeah, I, she didn't. She didn't need to be in this movie. Was, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nothing would have changed if you had taken her out of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, she would have been in the movie if she didn't get to hold the hammer. I think that was the that was the only way she was gonna come back. Yeah, it was just like yeah, it was just weird. It was just yeah, because later before she didn't really add anything. She wasn't couldn't really provide. I think it's just the fact of having later thought in there. They wanted that. Yeah, because yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought because I thought they were because you know the the Avengers are being remixed. They're doing they're, they're setting up the new Avengers. You got the n- new Black Widow, the new Hawkeye, going to be the new Iron Man. The, I thought that she was going to be the replacement. Like she was going to yeah. replace Thor in the next Avengers, oh, yeah. but yeah. they killed her off. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess I so I just really didn't understand what the plot line was. She in there just yeah. to die. <laughs> to get yeah. Thor to, yeah. uh, it just yeah it seemed odd yeah she literally was uh-huh. there to give Thor the child at the end and well, supposedly make him see the value in loving again but yeah I don't know <laughs> like, again it was quite, <laughs> quite weak in it to track from Thor's character I, I, I will say I will say that um, I did find um, the scene where she was in the bathroom like quite memorable um, you know the scene like where like I think she drops the hammer and like you see her go back to herself and she's like oh yeah yeah yeah. and um you know she i i did feel like that was quite a good performance on on her part and then she kind of picks up the hammer and then smashes the sink i thought that was quite a powerful scene it was a serious scene and i think that was one of the only few serious scenes we had in the movie like where it was this isn't funny this is serious we're seeing a character in conflict and in anguish and in pain yeah um and i I would have liked um definitely from her um from her yeah character. yeah i mean i feel like she was a bit wasted like because she, she she has so much range when it comes to like more dramatic performances rather than comedic ones and they just didn't really they, they didn't really utilize her abilities her skills in that in that respect so um i mean i don't know if you guys have anything else you wanted to get into i think we've pretty much aired out i mean i thought I thought it was quite deep that um, when when Thor found Sif near the beginning, that like, he made a joke about her arm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe your arm didn't yeah. That was quite yeah. insensitive, bro. Like that was that was so ridiculous. I was I was like, she's literally there dying. She's lost an arm, and you're yeah. cracking jokes. Like, like it's just oh, it's just man. not something Thor would do. And also, so it would have been, been, been it would have been nice to see that actually happen. It would have been yeah, nice to see what yeah, actually yeah. happened to her and it's, how he yeah. killed that big god or whatever. That would have been interesting yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah, but it's yeah. so true. You gotta wonder, would there were there like budget restraints? Because it just seemed like all the big moments were off screen, happened off screen. Like we were all yeah, dealing, yeah. we were dealing with the aftermath. This movie should just yeah. be called Thor Aftermath because yeah. there was no <laughs> Yeah, there was, there was no sense of oh like something big something big is happening. You're just you're just seeing the the, uh, the results of what's happened already uh, with Jane, yeah. with, with Thor, with Gore, with, with you know everybody, and it, it is very frustrating because you just yeah. feel like this movie could could have been so much more than it turned out to be. So. Did did any sorry did anyone stay? Um, the, were there any after credit scenes? I can't remember yeah. if I stayed. Yeah. The there was. Scenes. Actually, I don't have was... on the same. One of the credit um, scenes was spoiled because th- in the trailer it, sh- it names a certain actor, and I was like, hold on, hold on a minute, he's not in the movie. I didn't see this guy in the movie. Yeah. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? And then you see yeah. him, and you're like, oh right, okay, fair enough. All right. So, Are they worth watching? You watch both on YouTube. Uh, no, they're not. Should I watch worth, they're not worth watching. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they're worth it, but you can if you want. They're only. <laughs> they're only worth watching if they if. If there's another movie that comes out and yeah. those characters are in it, yeah. that will it yeah. that will explain why. Because yeah, it's yeah. Fair enough. Well, I, I we're, talking, we're, we're talking about Idris Elba. Like, we're talking okay, about fair Hunter. enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just I just went home. I didn't care. <laughs> I, 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 I literally I literally thought the end credit scenes were going to be more jokes. So I just said I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's just basically set up a, a way to bring Jane Foster back and. Yeah. And Idris Elba, if they need to. Right. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, no, I don't um, think it was that. I think. I think that. Actually, no. Maybe it's Marvel after all. I actually yeah. thought it was a way of uh, just showing that she's finally at rest, I guess, in in yeah. Valhalla. But yeah, you're right. I guess with Marvel, you don't know. 
be a great yeah. thing. Which, which also ruined one of the jokes that he that Thor made with Lady Sif about you have to try drawing the battle in order to get into Valhalla. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not true. Because she got a cancer. I was I was thinking like oh like do you need to die within a certain time frame after you've been in a battle or something or like, I don't know like minutes it doesn't matter because the battle was not what killed her oh yeah 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 <laughs> she would have died regardless maybe, maybe it was about her battle with cancer which maybe they should have focused on there's bad cancer patients in Valhalla Oh man. Oh, no, we should be half of them. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, yeah, I think, yeah, obviously, the, yeah, completely just missed the term. Yeah, man. Oh. It's weird. But yeah, should we go, should, should we go to ratings? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. I'll, 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 I'll go first. Um, yeah, I think, honestly, I think the me was a bit of fun. Um, I'm certainly not going to think about it again. I wasn't about it after the movie. Like, I did Marvel films trying to figure, figure out if there's any, like, things I missed or anything. I didn't even feel the need to stay for the end credits. That's how kind of fed up I was by the end of it. Um, but it was a bit of fun to watch. Um, I did enjoy quite a few of the jokes on screen. Um, and it was good to at least visually see this Olympic place of all the other gods. Um, it was, it was. I think we were talking in like our, our chat about like like WTF moments. And um, for me, I, I, I think you all saw the movie. The WTF TF moment for me was when when I, you think Thor has killed Zeus, and I thought that was quite like a big like shocker, like, oh, like, where the hell is this movie going now? Um, but yeah, I just thought it was just weird that they went to Olympus to enlist the help of the gods, and then they left with um, Zeus's weapon, and I think um, one of the characters said something like, oh, this is for the help we need, but then the weapon doesn't, it's inconsequential to actually defeating in the end, so it was like, what was the point anyway? Um, so yeah, just a bit of fun. Um, probably won't watch it again and if there is a sequel where they do fix Thor's character I'm definitely gonna have to just ignore this one in the franchise but I ignore that or five and just write it off if it didn't happen um I think I'll give this movie a I think I'll give it a, a say five um just because what Peter said I didn't hate it it was a bit of fun and game to watch but it just wasn't amazing and I'm not going to be thinking about it so I think five you know I paid my money Maybe didn't get my money to work, but I didn't leave the cinema feeling like, oh, it's a waste of money. So five for me. Um, yeah, cool. just, just just about edible. Just about edible. If we're talking <laughs> about, about edible. I'll go next. Yeah, I'll go. Um, for me, it's felt like a B sci-fi movie. I, I could watch this on Sci-Fi Channel, and I would, I, that's the kind of movie it was for me. Like it was stupid. There's, a lot of it didn't make any sense. There's, they were doing things that just didn't need to be doing. Like. The whole battle with the kids, just Thor's powers in general seem to fluctuate as well. Like, he can now delegate his powers. He mm-hmm. can fight this one, he's on Paul Jade, who's just got her powers. He can delegate his powers with no detriment to himself. Like, normally you give away your powers, you get weaker. And mm. his, his character became a joke, and it's the kind of thing you'd expect to see on a sci-fi channel. So, for, I went to see a Thor movie, and I didn't get that. So, for me, this is, this is a two. Oh wow! Ooh. Wow! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Basically raw, yeah, raw, yeah. a bit, bit. Of... Still frozen. I mean, for me, next. for for me, um, I felt like this 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 movie was too like just just too too much, man. It's too much. It, it just needed to um, sit out a bit longer to thaw before cooking it. Oh, because... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh God. I'll be holding on to that one for a while. But yeah, no, nah, in, in all seriousness, yeah, there was just so much, there's just too many issues to count, man. Um, it's like, I imagine, like, no movie's perfect, but you know, this, this film just had just countless, countless uh, flaws and you know because because the source material is just so good like there's there's so much potential with the source material i felt it was just squandered with this film it, you know it just went to waste especially with the actors they hired like why 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 hire oscar caliber actors if you're not going to utilize their performances um yeah i mean you know yeah. the, the the whole kind of plot holes it, it creates more plot holes for the previous marvel movies with the whole eternity thing you know that could have easily solved the whole 
end game scenario conundrum where they had to bring back you know people that were were, were clipped away they could have used the stormbreaker to do that you know it doesn't make sense um the whole thor giving out his powers now uh he, he could have done that again he could have done that in infinity wars he could have lent his power out to you know everyone to other heroes yeah exactly right. so, <laughs> it's just like defense we're gonna i I guess this only defense is that I guess the movie was implying the lightning bolt allowed him to do it. That's all I can think. Okay. Is that the <laughs> lightning bolt allowed him to do it? Hey, <laughs> and that's if you know, if if he can, if he can do man. it for some kids, he can do it for, <laughs> for some adults. That's all I see. It. I don't know, lightning bolt or no, no lightning bolt. And he's the god of thunder, so he should not have no problem conjuring lightning bolts from his ass. So, anyway, but <laughs> I, 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 I felt like you know. The, 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 the story was written in a day and then the jokes were kind of t t took up most of the, the writing room yeah. they they were like oh no we need more jokes they they kept going back for more jokes they were like no nah, hasn't got enough jokes come on rewrite again rewrite again more jokes <laughs> more jokes and it just got to the point where it's like look I, yeah we want to be entertained we want to laugh but at the same time we want to we want to feel uh, we want to feel an emotional roller coaster like we want to feel sad want to feel uh, fear want to feel worry want to feel all these we don't just want to like have a laugh track we, we can watch snl for that we can watch saturday night live we can go to a pantomime theater for that but this is not the space for a thor movie where if you're you know you're trying to follow up from one of the greatest marvel movies arguably um so yeah i mean uh, I, f I felt like this was a, a large letdown and um i was really looking forward to this movie i don't know about you guys but yeah, yeah I, I think uh, Thor deserves better, so I'm gonna give four a four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, me so I can go next real quick. Um, so, uh, ooh, where it starts? Thor has been like one of my favorite characters. Um, well, since since Infinity War, really, because because um, I liked what they did with him in Ragnarok. Even they did they made him slightly dumb, but. He had some cunning to him in Ragnarok. He, he he had some good character traits, and I loved his um, journey of uh, you know this is tragic journey, and then him kind of uh, kind of redeeming himself uh, with Endgame and everything like that. So uh, seeing all that happen, and and then having this movie kind of slightly undo a lot of that with all the comedy and stuff that everybody's obviously mentioned because that was such a big flaw with the film. I don't even think they like, as Pete said, I don't think they were even writing the jokes. I think they just improv, just pure improv and stuff. It just doesn't sound like they put that much work into like the writing side of things at all. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, visually I did like it. I know you said it was bland, but I can see parts of it being bland, but I actually quite like the visuals and especially um, I do like the fact that they made everything um, with gore in like monochrome, especially on that planet. I thought that was a really nice touch and it was very, very beautiful to see. Um, I liked the soundtrack and everything. Um, the, my main gripe with the film, uh, obviously the story, but I freaking love God Gore, the God Butcher. I thought he, he's such a badass character. He, he's like up there with like Thanos and stuff because he's so goddamn powerful that it took past Thor, present Thor, and future Thor to team up together to actually beat him. That's how goddamn powerful he's supposed to be. And in this one, it took Thor and some kids. So it's such a slap in the face for <laughs> Gore fans to see it all happen that way. And the fact that they cut out what we wanted to see was, you know, butchering gods. The, 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 the main thing we wanted to see was him butchering gods, especially with Christian Bale. Um, putting his best performance out of everyone, really, um, dramatically anyway. It just, I'm just at a loss for words sometimes because because the fact oh, that they just dropped the ball so much in this film of something I was honestly really, really looking forward to. I, I wouldn't say I just totally hate the film because um, because there is some bits to appreciate. And, and I did laugh every now and then because especially when you're in the cinema, you're, you're kind of with everyone, and you're laughing. So even if something you might not have laughed on your own, but when someone else laughs, it kind of makes you laugh. So it kind of gives you like a false sense of enjoying it. Um, but after really thinking about it, when I got home and stuff and just, just reviewing <laughs> my head and, um, you know, going through the film, it, it kind of brought it down a bit. So, um, yeah, without going on too much, I would give this a, 
Well, be it undercooked for sure. And I think I'll join Ruben in the five out of ten for this one. There, there's some stuff to enjoy, but overall, with the with the subject matter they they uh, chose, it shouldn't have been as jokey as it was. That's the bottom line. Uh, did you feel like you were like brainwashed a bit when you got home? Kind <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> a bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was brainwashed in the movie into thinking I actually enjoyed <laughs> a lot of the things. Yeah. <laughs> But once you think about it, you're like, oh man, it could have been so much more. It could have been so, so yeah. much more. Yeah, that's, that's what happens at some of these uh, uh, movie showings. Like, you know, because obviously you're getting into the atmosphere of it. You just feel yeah. like you're having more fun than the actual movie should require, uh, deserve. You know, yeah, exactly. Who's next up? So, I hated this movie. I hated everything about it. I, I couldn't tell. I, we, we watched this in IMAX, super screen. What oh. a waste of fucking money. Like, I am so pissed. Like, and the problem with this movie is the more you think about it, the more you hate it. Like, and I just started off hating this movie. Like, but when you start to think, and, and, and obviously, as he said, I am bringing baggage from the previous film, Ragnarok, that, that they did. But that's not my fault. He set the standard, not me. He set the standard. And then he just thought, fuck the standard, I'm just going to do what I want. And I'm sure when they were making this movie, they had a blast. Because it doesn't look like there was any sort of control. It just said, just do what you want, improv. Just as long as it's fun, you're having fun, it's great. But there was so much wrong with this. And when I review movies, I put a lot of stock in the story and the characters. If those two components are trash, I don't care about the art direction. I don't care about the soundtrack. Those are nice to have. Those are cherries on top of the cake. But if you ain't got a cake, I don't give a fuck about the cherry. (laughs) So, and... The story made so little sense, and it looked like they they had they put so little effort into it. It was just about the jokes, and then there were only two jokes I think I laughed at in this movie. The Stormbreaker one, the first one where it was getting jealous, I laughed at that. And also when they got to like the Shadow Realm planet and the boat just bumped into like the moon thing, I also laughed at that. That is not enough to save this movie. I this movie. I, 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 we already went through all the problems, so there's no point rehashing that. But it just seemed like they had no idea what made Ragnarok great. They didn't understand how to set up a, an, in, a, an, in, a, a, an intriguing villain or at least a scary villain. Like in Ragnarok, even though she, uh, Hela wasn't in the movie much, <laughs> sorry, even though Hela wasn't in the movie much, the first time you see Hela, she crushes Milner in her hand like it was made out of paper. Like that, that sets up a scary antagonist. Man just, just took your weapon and crushed it and then kicked you out of the, the Bifrost when you're trying to run away. That is how you set up a scary villain. Gore, we saw him for 10 minutes. He stabbed one god, stole a bunch of kids and ran away because he couldn't fight, couldn't beat four in all hand-to-hand combat. Oh, it was just such a huge missed opportunity. I was looking forward to this so much. And that is why I'm being so harsh in this movie because I expected so much better. Like, I don't know how you went from Ragnarok to this. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, was, was it a fluke? Was Ragnarok just a fluke? I don't know how you fluke something that well, but after seeing this movie, I don't want him to touch any other MCU properties. I don't want to see him direct anything in the MCU ever again. Thor was my favorite character after Ragnarok. I now can't stand him. I, I, I'm done with the MCU. I don't really care about Phase 4 anymore. That's how, this is how much, this is what I was thinking when I left the movie. I was like, okay, I don't care. He's got a daughter now. I don't care about the daughter. I don't care. I, I'm done. I don't want to see any more movies. Like, it made, it's made me start hate, hating other, like, peripherals. Like, oh, like, Guardians of the Galaxy was catching shots. I was like, fuck Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'm talking about now. They're stupid too. Like, I was just, I was just, I'm not so emotional about this because I was expecting so much more. When they, because they have the material to do it as well. I mean, God, the God Watch is quite an iconic fucking villain. <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyway, so for me, uh, I'm going to give this a one out of ten. Fuck this movie. <laughs> yeah, I saw that coming, yeah. yeah. So it's, not even, it's not even raw. Like, they gave me a live animal and said, yeah, eat that. I was like, what? Oh, I've got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta share it myself. I've got to grab it myself. I've got to kill it myself. I've got I, I to make this whole fucking meal myself, basically. And you go to a restaurant, they just throw a chicken at you. And you ask for a chicken burger. Uh, no, no. Man, that, was, uh, that was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. I hope, I hope that was very, like, therapeutic. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 He got yeah. 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 Um, the whole, what do you call it? The fact that the the, the, the cast were having more fun than the audience. Like, <laughs> yeah. you could tell, like, they had more fun making this movie than it was actually actually watching the movie itself, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is, yeah, setting up the villain, which is, like, a, an amazing point with the whole Hella thing, you know, crushing the hammer. I felt yeah. like, what could have really, um, like, it would have been an easy uh, way to, to make Thor, uh, gore terrifying is if you know the scene where they go to the sanctuary of the gods gore just shows up and kills all the gods yes that would yeah, that yeah, just absolutely. Done it. that would have done it well, so, simple. Yeah. so simple um but yeah just yeah wasted potential but yeah i think is that everybody or yeah yeah that's everyone that's everyone, that's everyone. Right. Yeah. great the movie yeah, was trash so oh, uh, yeah oh well, I, right. I, I, I don't know about you guys, yeah. but I'm excited for Wakanda Forever. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait for Wakanda Forever. Uh, Let's go. I still don't know what they could do with that film. I'm very, very oh, intrigued. Man. Okay, so that about sums it up. Thank you for joining us all the way through to the end. Hope you had fun and you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoy talking about it. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again next time. If you did enjoy this discussion, please leave a like, please comment, subscribe, share the video. You know what to do. You've done this before. I don't have to tell you. And uh, you know, once again, thank you for joining the crew. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. And it's, it's a pleasure, honestly, to be able to provide videos like this. Um, the Real Grill is still in its growing stages. So, you know, your contributions really go a long way and they really help us to grow and to, you know, spread out there because we have so much, so much to offer. And as you watch this space, there's so much to come, so many exciting things, projects, um, videos, and ideas that we have in the pipeline that we you know, really wanna make possible, but we can't do it without you guys. So uh, we're counting on you to make this happen. Uh, you know, We need you to help us. Uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and peace out. Mwah.